All right. So good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the weekly Binalo Talk. So our uh, following our uh, our uh, theme, uh, we alongside with uh, Ara and uh, Andrea Kusalan, we came up with some ideas on how to have a different format for the Binalo Talk. So for those who aren't familiar with the Binalo Talk, this is a weekly uh, lecture series hosted by the Archaeological Studies Program. Uh, and we usually have this every Wednesday during lunchtime while everyone's eating lunch. And then we have an informal talk. So it's very informal. It's very fun. There's, there's a lot of discussions. Um, and we started doing this online during the pandemic. And we'll watch out for more information. Maybe we'll have this on hybrid form in the future. But for now, we're still doing this online. Um, and uh, following the informalities of our talks and making it more fun, we at least we hope that it's more fun, and we encourage everyone to um, to participate. We've also uh, done this uh, format. If you were here la last week, we had we invited a couple of um, podcasters of who are interested in archaeology and uh, prehistory, uh, who are they? Uh, they are scientists who. Uh, are doing podcasts on their uh, on their uh, research on their study. So we'll be having that online on YouTube uh, soon. But in the meantime, we've invited our uh, friends over for something different. So may I invite Ms. Andrea Casalan to uh, to introduce our speakers for today. Hi, thanks, Anna. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Anna mentioned, so this month we've been trying to do something a little different where it's really geared towards public archaeology and science communication, but in a roundtable discussion format. Um, so today um, we, we've gathered um, speakers, resource people who try to communicate archaeology in a very uh, creative way, in an, in, not in a traditional way. Um, and, and to quote uh, Ara's poster, where we try to you know, break down these ivory towers. So I'll be introducing each of our panelists today. Um, and then perhaps, um, as I call um, the panelists, you could give us a brief um, introduction about your project, your approach, um, and then we, we'll go on from there, OK? So first off, we have um, Let's see who to call. Okay, first off, we have Dante Manipon. He's a senior lecturer at the University of the Philippines Archaeological Studies Program. Um, he, he is um, also involved in several Paleolithic research projects and is interested in stone tools, experimental or actualistic studies, napping, projectiles, interactive and kinesthetic learning, especially games. So um, good morning, Dante. Kindly tell us about yourself and what you do today? Uh, good morning. So primarily, I am senior lecturer at ASP. Uh, so most of those activities actually live on as a lecturer. Basically, it is like what you said. Um, and I'm into all of that. So I try to get students involved in those kinds of things as well. So all kinds of activities that we've come up with, I as well as many of you here as well that we've all come up with together. We all love fun and educational games. There's so many activities to choose from. But I think today I'll focus on one activity and that's the uh, throwing activity. So I guess I'll anchor most of my um, sharings on that particular activity, yes. Yay, thank you very much, Dante. Next up, we have Linel de Castro, also known as Ellie, where she's an archaeologist and National Geographic explorer, where she spends most of her time thinking about ways to bring heritage closer to youth who come from the places she's had opportunities to do fieldwork in. So she enjoys practicing um, science storytelling and problem solving for Ili Cave, that's in El Nido, Palawan, where her latest project, Explore My Ili, is an exploration kit that uses the power of science and stories to inspire students to learn more about their homes and communities. So good morning, uh, Ellie. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. So I just want to quickly show this before we start. Um, so this is Explore My Ili, and it's a kit that comes with um, nine activities, uh, which are all, which are like, there's one for archaeology, 
but there are also activities for marine conservation and biology and geology and there's one for history and a few more there's one for anthropology too um and basically the idea is that you can learn whatever it is um that you want to learn through these lenses from your own community happy to be here Oh, sorry. Thank you very much, uh, Ellie. Um, and and just to show, uh, just to to reiterate, she doesn't just focus on archaeology per se, but tries to explore the different aspects that um that we deal with in the uh the Palawan project, Palawan Island Research Project. So next up, we have um all the way from stateside, um. Marie Julian Ente, also known as Jay, she's with the Ayala Museum in Makati City where she is, a, she is an associate manager for research and publications and is the managing editor for numerous Ayala Museum catalogs and volumes. So she is also an assistant curator where she helps produce and supervise the museum's on-site exhibitions and online content. So Jay has led the production of two of Ayala Museum's online video series, namely Atin, Stories from the Collection and Object Rewind. So th these are pretty exciting, no? So take the stage, Jay. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. So much like Ellie, no, I what we do in the museum does not just focus on archaeology, but pretty much Philippine history and heritage and fine arts. Because um, a lot of the programs, the public programs that we do are geared towards um, people in having a having a engaging um, experience or encounter with our collections. In a way, we want our collections to become like um, an entry point or a gateway for them to be more fascinated or be more intrigued by what Filipino or what Philippine history and culture is all about. So uh, thank you for the great introduction or the uh, very generous introduction, Andrea. So. Apart, so mainly I do some curatorial work at the museum, so I help out with the exhibitions uh, in managing the exhibitions that we have. Um, I also work on our catalogs, our publications, but today I think what would be most interesting uh, for, for everyone that I would zero in on are our video series, which really was launched during the, around 2020. We didn't expect it to become like a, a main program because we didn't expect the pandemic to happen. We were doing it for another thing, but eventually we adjusted and then we realized that, oh, okay, maybe this is a, a route that we should really go, hindi lang for temporary or in the interim. So yeah, so I'm gonna talk about a little bit more about that later and I'm excited to also hear what the projects of, the, of my fellow discussants are. Thank you very much, Jay. Um, so we can see um medyo malawak din yung scope na na dinadala natin. So from um from within the classroom but trying to go beyond with, with Dante and then we have Ellie working with the project sites and um with Jay working with the museums. Now we move on to Edil who is our resident archaeologist from Bulacan wherein of course in following you know the, the Tagalog tradition. I will introduce him in uh, Filipino. So um, next up, of course, we have um, Edil Better Ed, Edil Bel Berto Jr., also known as Edil. Na siya ang kasalukuyang director ng bahay sa Lixika ng Bulacan at tagapanguna sa archaeological research project. Sorry, sa Biak na Bato National Park. Miembro din siya ng Regional Cave Committee ng DENR sa Region 3 at committee member din ng Protected Area Management Board. So, uh, isa siyang contributor sa 29 Sanghaya publication ng National Commission on Culture and the Arts, um, Two Traditions, Two Culture. Uh, kasalukuyan niyang kasalukuyan niyang archaeological research project ang tungkol sa paggamit ng ground penetrating radar or GPR at pagsusuri ng mga archaeological sites sa Pilipinas. So, welcome aboard, Edil. Salamat, Andrea. Uh, sa aming sigawa sa Bulacan, basically, the key word for us is collaboration to do public archaeology. Uh, we do, uh, we need to do ano, uh, orientation in our 
own institution in BSU to make uh, archaeology work in Bulacan. Although Bulacan is always mentioned in some archaeological report in the past year, in the past decades, pero yung uh, yung serious and much more longer uh, uh, research work na may kinalaman sa archaeology ay hindi naman masyado o wala pang nagawa sa Bulacan other than us. So for now, uh, what we are doing is we try to collaborate to some uh, colleges like College of Arts and Letters. So we do some filmmaking na may somehow may archaeology and we do some ano, no, uh, uh, development of uh, doing field research with other uh, uh, professionals like engineers, civil engineers, so mga architects. So in-involve namin sila to make sure na maintindihan nila uh, how archaeology can be uh, allied na gawa namin na way of public archaeology. Then sa, sa Biak na Bato naman, definitely, we are trying to talk to so may, uh, some people's organization na connected doon sa, sa, sa site na aming pinag-aaralan. So doon sa Biak na Bato and other um, uh, entity like the uh, senior citizen also na meron ding in, malawak na involvement sa community ay consistent yung aming communication sa kanila. So basically, ganun, ganun yung tumatakbo yung public archaeology dito sa Bulacan. Salamat. Salamat sa, uh, sa introduction na yun. At saka makikita natin, we can really see that there's a lot of uh, uh, different perspectives dito sa, na dinadala mula sa iba't ibang mga uh, resources natin. So, um, Siguro magandang matanong and I'm very interested to learn because um, I get well I know some of what you're uh, all of you are doing but uh, and you gave that good in introduction but I also wanted to ask uh, how did you come up or maybe you can tell us a little more about what your some of the projects and how you came up with the uh, with the methodology or approach or uh, the inspirations behind the projects that you've been uh, doing maybe. Uh, maybe we can start with um, uh, Ellie. Oh, uh, if it's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, in, in my head, I thought, ah, okay, so si Dante yung first yun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Walang turn order dito. <laughs> oh, pero, I don't know. Feel free to jump in whenever. Like, uh, if you if it's similar to what you also experience, so feel, feel free lah. Okay, so for this kit, so I I've been involved with the um education school stuff in Palawan for quite a while so for a number of years but for this kit the reason why it happened um is because in 2020 the plan was that i was bringing uh, a scientist and a geologist friend over to ile so that they could explore with the kids so yun yung idea na parang ah, okay um yung kids marami na sila archaeology it's time for them to see na, ah, hindi lang pala archaeology yung meron dito sa, sa paligid. And using the same place, you can use it to see biology in your neighborhood or you can use it to see geology in your neighborhood. Um, so that was the base idea. But then, of course, when we couldn't bring them over, uh, the question was, okay, so what do we do? Um, but still, we had, you know, the caves were still there. The kids were still there. So how do we bring the experience there? And so what we did, and so okay, the it wouldn't work if it was a a video call. Um it firing it wouldn't work if it was a, a Zoom thing or a definitely not a lecture. Uh and then I think somebody suggested to me, um, no, and it was somebody said that they were piloting a nature journal in their school for grade three students. So para, ah, we can do that too. But then we already had these two people coming. Um, and so I, I asked them if they could turn what they were supposed to do in person into activities that the kids could do themselves um, with instructions. So parang, the idea was you get, you get this activity and then you go around and explore yourself. Pero you have a guide on what to do. Okay, and then you you see what you can see, right? Uh, and then when we started that, so there was that was a um, a biology in a forest bio 
and a landscape um, activity, which was more a geology themed one. And then uh, two friends na marine conservation said, okay, kami rin. So we added uh, one where they talked to a fisherman para matuto sila kung ano yung uh, pagbabago sa fish catch in the past few years. Uh, and this is in relation to climate change. And the other one was about plankton. Pero um, looking at um, a water, a body of water in your neighborhood, tapos yung life cycle around it. And then to balance it, uh, to pumasok yung, yung anthro and history activities. And then there's one on food and gender. So you observe how you see that in your community, still guided. And so, dumami na siya ng dumami. Um, and then we had the activities, but then, well, that's in your story. So we had to include a radio episode for each activity where the kids um, listen to the person who made the activity um, explain or tell the story of like, bakit ba siya naging biologist? Or bakit ba interesting yung biology? And paano niya makikita yung biology dun sa sarili niyang barangay? Like, Ano yun in the barangay context? And then your instructions on how to do the activity um, themselves. And so that was the kit itself. And then we piloted that um, for grade 7 and grade 8. And so each week, the kids uh, get a stamp if they finish the activity. And at the very end, um, if you finished all of them, or at least a significant number, you get um, a guided trip to, to Ile. Woo! Na nasasarili mo na barangay. But, but the special thing was um, that they get to use fold scopes, which are paper microscopes. Um, and we just said, okay, this is like a, a fold scope, paper microscope. You get to use a microscope and you get to make your own slides. So like, may nagdala ng uod, tapos ni, pinak, sinaksak nila yung uod na nagbibit pa yung yeah, um, uh, dun sa slide. And then, merong, um, merong trinay nilang kutuhan yung aso for 30 minutes, pero ayaw no aso, so hindi nila nagawa yun. And then, merong nagbato-batopic para malaman ko sino yung susugatan nilang friend para malagay yung blood niya sa microscope. So that is how uh, it ended. <laughs> it was very fun. <laughs> comment si Dante dito na it's like an RPG with quests pero parang uh, that escalated quickly. Ha? Yeah, may blood sacrifice pa. <laughs> oh, nice. but, pero since based sa uh, uh, projects, uh, how about si Edil? Uh, ano ba? Sa amin kasi ano eh, uh, Medyo malaki yung kailangan namin habulin kasi dun sa mga report, pang 1950s pa yata, may mga treasure hunting activity na sa, sa mga kuweba sa Bulacan. So, ang talagang tinarget namin talaga nung sinimula namin yung archaeology is to, ano, no, to erase, uh, to erase uh, misconception about archaeology. Archaeology is treasure hunting, archaeology is only about history, mga ganong bagay. So talagang uh, inagenda namin talaga na makapasok doon sa doon sa committee na may involvement doon sa uh, conservation ng mga sites especially doon sa Biak ng Bato. So doon sa halimbawa doon sa Biak ng Bato uh, early 2000 pa ay we already know na may mga cave looting na ginagawa yung mga yung mga mismong tao doon sa lugar. So uh, ang ginawa namin ay we, we produce uh, data out of the research. Then uh, we present it in the Protected Area Management Board. And then uh, from there, uh, we, we are trying to influence them ano, na involve aspect of archaeology in their management of their, of their protected area. At ngayon ay masasabi ko na uh, isa kami sa mga may, mga, may manual of operation na mayroong uh, specific na pagbanggit sa uh, cave, uh, archaeological cave committee 
ng Biak na Bato National Park. Kasi doon sa Republic, uh, doon sa, ano, ano, sa Inay Pass Act, expanded ni Pass Act of 2018, mayroong binibigay na leeway sa mga Protected Area Management Board, katulad na sa Biak na Bato, na mag-design ng sarili nilang committee para depende no, sa kailangan ng site nila. So dahil nga meron na tayong data doon sa sa Biak na Bato tungkol sa archaeology, uh, na, na, na-convince namin sila na magsayo na magtayo ng subcommittee na specifically ang purpose ay to inform the public na ang Biak na Bato is an archaeological site. So basically ganun yung kaya medyo sa Bulacan, medyo hardcore talaga yung uh, public archaeology na kailangan kasi ay uh, Maraming mga lugar sa Bulacan ang mabilis nang na, nare-refer no? na nababago yung landscape because of uh, uh, conversion of land. So ganun. Ayun. Uh, thank you Edil no. Um so medyo nakikita na, na rin natin yung themes um uh, between um what Ellie what has been doing pati na rin si Edil. Ngayon naman ay punta tayo sa museums uh, with Jay. Parang ano yung um more or less you already discussed this uh, during your your intro but could you kindly elaborate a little bit more especially um your your two uh video projects as well. Yeah, so thank you. So With the museum, yung programming namin, we really wanted it to expand beyond the walls of the museum, which has been an initiative naman ever since. Pero we've focused for the last maybe um, five or maybe even ten years to making a stronger online presence. So sa social media, sa website. Kasi, um, you know, not everyone can go naman in Makati. Not even people in Makati can, can visit the museum at least sure kasi nagtatrabaho sila or nasa school sila. So we needed parang to exploit the new channels that are available. So we wanted to, we want to think that in a way, kami yung isa sa mga nag, um, talagang nag-pioneer ng um, how museums interact with audiences online. So, noong 2019, um, the museum was up for uh, lo- parang a long, parang mat- matagal na na needed na renovation, building renovation. One, because we needed to expand that in our space um, because of the um, the increasing audience at saka yung um, demands for yung building maintenance din. Kasi even if it looks new, um, it's actually mga 20 years old na din at that point um, or more. So yung, hindi naman, mga 10 to 15 siguro na building. And then, um, so that was 2019. So we didn't want to disappear no, in the, maybe in the projected one or two years of the building renovation. So um, we needed, or parang there was a, there was a mandate to talagang, Um, pag-isipan kung paano magiging engaging online. Um, hindi lang yun. More than what we were uh, currently doing. Kasi yung ginagawa naman namin online, it was really more supplementary to what we were doing on-site. Diba? So kailangan pa ng robust yung online program. So that's how one of the ideas was to make use of the video platform which is through yung YouTube at somehow at that point medyo um, gamay na rin na namin yung video editing so we wanted to create programs to um, create stories about our collections online that was another thing kasi yung exhibitions that we have in the museum are only really like the tip of the iceberg diba? like most museums naman if you've been if you've had the chance to maybe intern or work in one um, you'll know that even the biggest museums, kahit na sobra, kahit buong araw mo na silang um, inikot, there's actually like, that's only actually 10% of their whole collection perhaps. And that's the same with us. So we wanted to um, use the online platform, the video platform to share the stories of our collections um, that yung hindi na hindi nasasabi or hindi na narrate sa usual naming exhibits, whether it's changing or permanent. Now, <laughs> ang fun thing that happened was, so we already had a series, we launched a series called Atin, uh, which is basically um, talking about three 
objects from the different kinds of collections in the museum with in connect namin with a certain theme. And then there's in focus, which talks about one particular object or collection at length or uh, parang at in depth. And then hindi na namin in expect na mag extend yung necessity for online uh for online content or for online engagement because we didn't naman think that we would get into a global pandemic which talagang forced in a way medyo blessing in disguise yung yung renovation plans namin na timing talaga siya na it was just before the pandemic kasi at least kahit papano na safeguard na namin yung collections namin we had a pro we had a plan for an online program um but we only had that for like um, a specific time na lang. Uh, so we had to continue with that and we had to do that in the pandemic. And then there was the challenge of not being able to access the objects, diba? So we had to rely on our digital uh, collections or the collections of images of uh, our objects. And then new object, which was the birth of Object Rewind. Kasi we couldn't do Atin because the production of that was involved the yung videography of the objects. So we had parang... Um, and then yung... I suppose yung naging lesson namin from that is that, oh, maganda yung... Apart from it was garnering its own audience, no? It was also a good way to also put in parallel with the on-site exhibits. Kasi nga, as I mentioned, it gives you an opportunity to take a look at the things or the stories that aren't explored by the on-site exhibitions. At the same time, it gives access to people who can't go physically. Even if ngayon na medyo nag-normalize na, there's still that limitation. People from in the provinces, people in uh, here, like in the US, diba? there's that opportunity to interact with Philippine culture through our collections, through the online content that we do. Ayun. So thank you, no. So um you you brought up a, a lot of points now, which we'll get into a little later. So unang sa unang sa lahat, let's let's move on to Dante. Um similar thing, like um why is it that Mabenta ka with your classes. Why is it that students line up to join your classes? What is it, what exactly makes your approach different from from others? You know, generally speaking, especially in a pedagogical sense. Oh, I I don't know, but um, so far from what I've been hearing with my other um, uh, kasama dito, my other discussants, uh, I think this is really cool that. We're all here talking about that. But I do see some interesting similarities uh, and some challenges as well. Um, I like what Jay said about accessibility. And I like how um, Linnell and Idil are, are doing things at a community and, and policy level. So I think um, at, the end, at the end of the day, we're all trying to do something similar, which is like, it's happening here, you know, it's happening. We're trying to change conceptions. We're trying to change perspectives and we're trying to raise awareness, right? So I guess if you're going to ask me what, what was the spark that, that, that was given to me that I still carry with me, where did it all begin? What was the origins? Ang dami-dami. Lahat kayo na nandito sa, sa, sa room na to. I've, I've had memories with you, like with Linnell when we were in Palawan. Remember, we... we we went with the community and we did the we did the thing and then si Idil, we were doing fire making with at the at Biak na Bato and Idea, of course to class and lots of people here as well in in my students are here too jay i have yet to i have yet to go to ayala museum myself so what you're sharing actually is very um exciting for me to hear so i would like to to try that but um to be more specific how it all started for me was somebody had to reach into my mind and open up the eyes of my mind myself before I could do that for others. And so to be more specific, I think it was when I was first exposed to the idea of experimental or actualistic archaeology. 
uh, learning by doing, um, trying to answer questions by doing, trying to solve problems by trying it out. And I can uh, remember a few key vivid moments how this happened. Um, number one, see Archie Bai. This is the first ever, because I, I went into archaeology thinking, uh, I, I'm going to be an archaeologist. And in my mind, it's like Egypt and like, you know, like historical archaeology and, you know, m like pop culture style archaeology. But Archie opened up my mind that to the idea that there was a prehistoric heritage that we have in the Philippines too, that also needs um, more attention. So, and he did it by simply handing me a stone tool and then saying, try to sharpen the stick with it. And so I spent an entire afternoon sharpening that, that stick and something came alive in me. I've never done something like this before. It was such a challenge. It felt like I was, I was doing something meaningful, like, uh, like, I don't know, something awoke inside me. And that, that kind of feeling is the kind of feeling that I want um, to share because I think a lot of people, it's, it's, well, una it's fun. And I think a lot of people have yet to experience that kind of feeling and enjoy it. It's a very tactile and, and kinesthetic way of experience, experiencing something. So like Idil said um, kanina, a lot of people, including me at the start, we have this concept that archeology span is like this. But actually, it's deeper than that, and it's wider than that, and it can be connected to so many things, whether it's natural or cultural heritage. Um, I think all it takes is for somebody to reach into our minds and our hearts and open that up first before we can do that for somebody else. So that's how it all started for me. So thanks, Dance, no? Um, so basically, we, we see, uh, basically, correct me if I'm wrong, we can see that, for example, with Ellie, you're here to, in some ways, bring the site, bring the projects to the um, the, the residents, to the people living in the community uh, close by to the project area. With Jay, you have bringing the museum to the people, in a sense. Um, and then, of course, Adil and Dante, you have your own advocacies where with Adil, it's, it's really trying to address treasure hunting, looting with Dante as well as, as where, you, where you're trying to tweak how we we teach archaeology in in terms of learning by doing as well as the I think this is for everyone else um, the accessibility of it all. We see that with Ellie and Jay, um, in some ways, your approaches were tweaked um, because of the pandemic. But for example, for Dante and Idil, how were you able to address? Um, address you, your advocacies given given the pandemic um, situation what challenges came uh, with, with it no because I, I'm sure you were used to doing you had a certain formula beforehand and then the pandemic hit so how did that affect it and of course we'll go to um, Ellie and Jay afterwards so if you want to elaborate more on that no so a deal or, or Dante a deal. Ah, sige. So, so, so kaya nga, yung, yung beauty ng collaboration is we get uh, other perspective from other experts outside archaeology. So, for example, the, the tourism faculty here in BSU, they are our ano, no, uh, dedicated partner talaga. So, during the pandemic, uh, we try to build a plan how to make the material available to the Bula to Bula to Bulacanio. So we, they come up to an idea na magawa kami ng mobile exhibit. So this mobile exhibit is funded by the Commission on Higher Education. It is also part of the Edu Tourism Project of uh, CHED. So uh, we prepare the context, we prepare the description, we, we, we prepare a lot of uh, archaeological material from Biak Nabato. And then... Uh, Uh, sinabi namin sa kanila, so you decide uh, so kung paano nyo gagawin na uh, magiging educational material ito na magpipit siya sa present condition ng pandemic. So isa yun sa mga naging uh, twist dahil sa pagkakaroon ng pandemic doon sa public archaeology na ginagawa namin. So other than that, of course, uh, katulong namin si Bea sa pag-develop ng isang uh, website na ang specific na usapan namin ni Bea ay uh, mga paragraphs and sentences simply describing 
what uh, kind of archaeology uh, present in Bulacan, in Biak na Bato. So yung mga ganong klase ng uh, twist doon sa mga plano ay talagang nangyari. So um, uh, fortunate kami na mayroon available fund to do that kasi kung wala, talagang medyo mag-DIY na naman kami. Pero yun nga, uh, yung yun kasi yung nakuha namin pondo from ano from Ched ay galing doon sa travel tax na binabayad sa gobyerno ng mga nag-aabroad. So yung nakukuha ng Ched ay ang mandate ng Ched ay to use this fund to support any uh, heritage or cultural activities within the academy. So isa kami sa mga binigyan ng grant ng Ched at binigyan kami ng leeway to decide no, kung anong focus yung gusto namin. At uh, again, fortunately na nasimulan yung project sa, sa archaeology sa Bulacan at available na yung mga material, at available na yung mga, yung mga write-ups, uh, uh, kailangan na lang i-process no? sa, sa level ng, ng, ng ordinaryong estudyante o sa level ng mga enthusiasts. So yun, yun muna yung pwede kong ma-share. Salamat. Salamat, Edil. Dante, would you like to... Oh, sige. Well, that's really cool. Mobile exhibit. That's really nice. Uh, I guess, Siguro, I can continue. To answer your question, I can continue from where I left off. So going down that path of, of learning by doing and having experienced something completely new to me and liking it and wanting to do it more and more and more, um, it led me to a lot of things. For example, naalala nyo ba, those of you from ASP, that experiment with the Erasmus students where we tried to throw a spear um, that was about a decade ago. Well, I, I, Old. <laughs> yeah, I volunteered to, to be one of those who threw the spear and I completely missed, but it, it's something, it, it really challenged me to keep practicing at home. And this is part of how I conceptualize these activities um, in the first place. Many of these activities that I, I do online, whether face-to-face -face or online, I mean, is um, there were once homebrewed, actually. So to answer your question, they, uh, not, not much has really changed because they all started from home in the first place. And so all I had to do was go back to that before it ever even reached the classroom setting and reshare that. So for example, the spear throwing activity, before the pandemic, um, we had students outside in the grassy area at ASP and they would have like life-size spears and they would throw it at a cardboard target. And that would be like um, one of the activities that we do in a face-to-face -face session. But now that it's pandemic, um, we can do a mini version, which was how I started actually, how I started conceptualizing this activity. I, I said, how can I do that at home? How do I practice so I can get better? And so I like what, what Jay was saying about accessibility because that's one thing I think that's very important. I need to be able to do activities that's easy enough for some, for, so that almost anyone could do it with, with little funding. The about funding is always a problem, as, as Idil said. Uh, so for example, you, you can have tape two barbecue sticks together and then you have like a little mini spear. So it looks like a, a javelin, like a little javelin. And here for, with, with, this is very cheap. And then you could have a cardboard target right there. And then as long as your instructions are well written, uh, the safety precautions and everything and like tips on how to throw, how to, then you could do it at home. You could even try it at home. Like, uh, let, me, let me try, I'm a bit rusty. All right, so I completely missed. So I've been doing this for, we for years. We can't see anyway, Dante. So we, we'll just believe you that yeah, yeah. there's something sticking out. Yeah, bullseye, all of it. Uh, but yeah, I've been doing this for years and it's still a challenge for me. And because it's a challenge, it's fun. There's replayability. And so in, in, in the pandemic setting, this kind of activity, this throwing activity, it lives on in the pandemic as a part of a bonus activity. In, in the course path that I send to students. So it's, it's just a bonus activity. But still, um, a lot of people end up doing it because and they have, because it's fun. <laughs> yeah, that's it for me. I think yung fun is one of the things that a lot of people are uh, uh, thinking about. And 
do you is this something that you was pri first and primary primary in all of your activities uh, to make it fun to make it more engaging or uh, was it a, how how was the process uh, in conceptualizing these uh, activities um, na, did you did you think about the fun first before you thought about the, what are the associated uh, science uh, uh, learnings na masama or did you think about the target first maybe you can give us some other ideas because I, I i think it's also um a conceptualization ang isa sa mga bagay na ma, uh, it's hard to think about for especially for a practice for many of the people who might be interested in uh, disseminating information about heritage and archaeology uh, maybe we can get uh, uh, jay to uh, give some ideas about because you're, uh, I'm also fascinated with your uh, with the works that Ayala Museum did. So maybe you can uh, give some ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, it helps if well, well, if you're an institution like us, it helps if you have if the tone comes from the top and you get talaga the support of um, the people who okay your work. So thankfully, um, our management is very keen on talagang exploring iba-ibang tones, iba-ibang messaging, and it, uh, it's very, we're very um, cognizant about, you know, not just parang providing yung usual na museum tone of how information is told, which is why, personally, when I was writing Object Rewind, I felt like I had that freedom to be a little bit more casual about the messaging and the way that I wrote Object Rewind. Um, to talk about Object Rewind, it's a mini series or it's a series based on uh, objects from our collection that initially the original idea was to talk about how one form of an object evolved to um, its current form, like an object that you use every day, like your um, drinking or your drinking cup or your utensils or your your chairs, ganyan, ganyan. Pero we realized now, wala kami masyadong objects in our collection that we can reference to. So we worked our way backwards and looked at what, ano bang meron sa collection namin that will tell a story of how our culture, our values, our practices have changed over time. And then these stories, parang it will give a new insight on things that people disregard as mundane or ordinary. No? And then it will give them a new fascination over things that they take for granted every day. So that's the whole idea of Object Rewind. So kaya yung mga words na ginagamit namin, we use, uh, parang at one point we use uh, yung to, to refer to ceramics as um, ano yun? status and wealth associated goods or swag, <laughs> acronym niya swag, or um, we were talking about different forms of the bag, no? uh, Philippine bags, basketry. We, we use terms na kilala today, like let's unpack or magbag haul, ganyan. So, and even in our social media, which is another team with uh, in the museum, yung marketing team namin who's uh, managing that, Yung Twitter namin, I think some of you are followers of our Twitter. Nakikita nyo medyo, ano sila, medyo playful yung, at saka youthful yung tone namin. No? So it's, I guess, medyo may inside joke din na parang, parang medyo, you would, the Ayala Museum is always saying something that's medyo um, out of brand. Pero that's also on brand sa amin, na medyo casual kami, medyo cool kami, ganyan. So that's all because, um, we, yung connection to the audience um, and parang being relatable is very important in getting them fascinated with history. Um, so, um, hindi naman sa disregard namin yung scholarship also and yung, of course, yung sensitivities um, that are involved with the objects. Pero, we, parang you just have to train yourself to find that balance na um, you are approachable, but at the same time, hindi naman masyadong casual or hindi naman na, na diminish 
yung yung uh, value of what what we're presenting and what we're doing and the scholarship you know the diminishing scholarship of what we do so there's always that um, that's what naman the management is always trying to to point out with us na yeah or yung that that's the balance that we have to meet para maging valuable yung mga content namin and that goes for uh, the series like object rewind Actually, we were talking about it with Ara, uh, Ara and a bunch of other people. This was like um, uh, new object rewind. It's like a smaller and online version and a, a local version of one of the TV shows that we used to watch. Uh, how and what is it? Sa BBC at that uh, they take a simple object from uh, uh, and their yeah. present and then a object from the past and they say these yes. two are connected and then they'll uh, and it's so random but they'll mm -hmm. uh, trace it back so parang napaka fascinating that it was associated but the, I this, forget the title but I know what you're talking about yeah. and it's actually one of our pegs ah, <laughs> besides okay. that peg din namin yung mga yung we always get pegs din naman in ano like we get yung mga Vox videos yeah. we get yung mga um yung mga TED Talks, ganyan. So, yung, kung ano yung style nila. Tsaka even yung sa graphics, that's also, go, kudos goes din also to our marketing team who is also very young and very creative um, and very express. Uh, parang yung, na-align nila yung need nila to express to yung mandate namin to educate. So, yun. So, it helps that if you have like a parang multidisciplinary team with you to, kasi, Yun nga, parang ako, I just write and research, pero it took a lot of people to come up with that series. I like and the, the other programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, ang nakakatawa, dahil parang talagang collaboration. And maybe uh, this is also the same with uh, anyone else from the rest of the panel. Is this also how you conceptualize? Is there also... Um, uh, uh, parang may may uh, kausap kayo and then you get ideas from there or do you have a question first about I want to talk about something how, so anong and how can we do that creatively ganun ba yung process of conceptualization maybe we can hear from uh, Ellie Elinel yeah so okay so jumping off of Object Rewind which is super cool um, uh, one other thing that we had was in between the radio episodes, meron siyang one and a half minute um, kwentong archaeology ang sa kalahating minutong kwento para sa mga hindi move on sa nakaraan. And then five episodes yun, tapos four episodes yung kwentong geology ang isa't kalahating minutong kwento para sa mga pusong bato. Tapos yung stories na yun ay basically... Um, so, yung ar archaeology part ng ile at saka kung paano siya nag-form. Uh, which is, yung, yung geology part was really fun for us to create because we knew nothing about it. <laughs> so, we knew no may really important fossils in the cave, but we needed to find a way to tell that story and also like, bakit ba may cave dyan? Uh, paano ba siya nabuo? And, and paano sila umabot? So, like, the story goes na... Um, so family si Ile at saka ang kanyang mga cave friends and family members sa Diwil. So sila, sila Diribungan, sila Star, ganyan. And then, nung na-form sila uh, millions of years ago, nag-decide sila na ayaw na nila sa China. So nag-move sila down. Um, and then, pag-move nila, ay na-meet nila yung southern half of Palawan. And they decided to be one Palawan. Which is, of course, a nod to uh, three-in-one Palawan. Um, and and so that is the story of that. And then there you have the fossils. And then you have like eventually, you know, what do you have to do to sort of have them for forever? Um, so yes, the answer is um, it's always a story. Uh, at least to me, it's always a story. Uh, and it's always fun to tell it as a story. Uh, I think if we just said my fossils, they're really old. Um, probably papatayin kami na radyo ng mga bata. So, yun yun. Ang cool then is because uh, you get uh, 
you get to create a narrative around it. So maybe ang uh, tama ba ako that you all you talk you have a subject that you want to talk about and it's also a, co- a question of how to make it more uh, accessible to the students. Yes. Yeah, so it's mm. in a way the process is longer than it's very long. So una you you spend so much time trying to understand what's actually going on and then you go through the literature and you ask um you know you ask the scientists and then you spend so much more time just sitting down and thinking well financial gigging story um and then you do the storytelling part which is yung, yung recording and yung actual like technical storytelling things which is making sure you have your sound right editing it and adding in the music edit etc so it's it's a whole different um to me what i realized was it's a whole different process than just doing the research which is actually quite fun i guess it's all uh, it's really a part of a uh, uh, science communication how to i guess it, there's also a part of interpreting uh, of the research materials that you are getting um and maybe this is also um, are are you also facing this uh, Edil and Dante or Edil maybe Ah uh, Edil sorry Ah so Dante muna Okay Eh never wala problema Ah Ganun din ba Dante sa 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 ano mo sa in your experience well, una una, I'd like to to give a huge nod to both Linnell and Jay. Uh, that's so cool. I love the idea of cool and casual, and um, you know, speaking the language of the youth and making things relatable and making things turning things into a story and a powerful narrative. For me, though, um, yeah, stories are awesome. But like for me, I think I try to um, make it more like a game. There's not that much difference uh, they're both fun they're both fascinating but um i think a lot of the youth today are, are games minded or exposed to games whether it's like video games or like playing in the streets games you know like uh, folk games um i think games and stories from the beginning of time that's what made us human right and then we, we love it we all love it and gaming industry, according to investopedia.com, gaming industry is like bigger industry than even music and, and movie industry. So I've, I've heavily invested in trying to make, um, communicate information more like a game. Uh, to answer your question, Anna, do I consider fun? Oh, yeah, yeah. Most of the time, most of the time I consider fun before anything else. Like, uh, it's the rule rule of fun. If it's not going to be fun, then it's not going to appeal to people. And if it's not going to appeal to people, just how are they going to internalize or uh, retain the information? Of course, you know, it's part of life to go through life and do things we don't want to do. But isn't it a bonus if we can learn things and get things done because we want to do it? And that's what games do. And that's what stories do. We retain information, we learn information by speaking their language, bringing it to their level, getting them involved, and making it fun. I think that, uh, well, it's also a challenge for all of you. So I guess it's also one of the things that uh, uh, looking at the material, uh, getting all these, uh, creating all these narratives, um, making it a more uh, physically active or Siguro um, ang nakikita ko rin sa uh, similarity sa, sa binanggit ni Elia at saka Mo Dante that there is um, there is the muscle memory part of this uh, of the of the projects that you are doing or of the teaching uh, methods that you are doing. Well, Jay is uh, very uh, so visual and use uh, ba ko, utilizing uh, the internet the internet savvy of the younger generation. <laughs> Um, and pero uh, I'm interested in, in hearing about Edil. How about your, your projects? How did you conceptualize these? 
project mm. that you have? Siguro, um, honestly, natutuwa ako dun sa mga nadidinig ko dun sa fellow discussant natin dito. Kasi I learned a lot from your, ano, ano, from your uh, activities and projects. Kasi parang sa akin, no, sa amin, no, sa amin uh, the way we think public archaeology, ay uh, hindi siya pa... I think hindi siya ganun ka-great, ka, ka, ka creative katulad nung nadidinig kong sinasabi nung iba kong fellow discussant. Um, paano ko ba sabihin niyo? Siguro uh, kailangan naming mag-adjust ng konti kung paano namin kinagawa yung public archaeology. Pero kung sa usapin ng creativity, uh, nag-fade lang ano, nag nag-fade lang yung plano namin na nag naggawa sana kami ng ano, may film festival sana na mayroong touch ng archaeology. It just so happened na nung nilaunch namin yung festival, walang sumali. So, mukhang <laughs> medyo may problema pa din talaga kami dun sa ano, how to reach the public. Uh, siguro isa sa mga masasabi ko na uh, level of uh, victory na nakuha namin doon sa ginagawang public archaeology ay before we do the archaeological research project here in Bulacan, Walang anumang thesis na undergraduate level na, na nasulat o pinopost ng sino mang estudyante in any college in BSU. Pero after we we ano no, uh, we conduct and publish all of the result in research in archaeology, may lima na nagpupunta dito sa opisina na sa tingin ko ay naimpluwensyahan ng publication na nilabas namin. So pero yung sasabi ko na yung creative way how to do public archaeology na nadinig ko dun sa apat kong kasamang discussant ngayon, parang hindi pa yan present sa Bulacan ngayon. Yun yung medyo ah, kailangan namin pag-isipan. At ah, salamat no, sa mga nadinig kong mga sharing of ideas and projects. Ngayon ay mas nakikita ko na ah, kailangan talagang push through no, yung mas creative na approach sa sa pag-conduct ng public archaeology. So yun lang, yun lang masasabi ko dun sa actually reaction doon sa mga at reflection na rin dun sa mga nadinig ko doon sa mga nag-discuss. I think rin um ang website na you mentioned yung website rin eh that you were planning on doing uh, mm, yes. something like that. That's also a big contribution because uh I know there's a lot of people who are struggling in making websites and uh, make uh, that's why they're utilizing uh, mm. Facebook because it's easy it's social media but to actually sit down and create the content for a website that's already a big uh, big thing um, yes Dante sorry you were raising your hand yeah if I may uh, ideal yes <laughs> no man naalala ko nung nasa Bulacan tayo when we did when you let the site visit, remember that? You brought uh, your your colleagues in a ah. natin sa point. <laughs> For me, I think that was super creative and fun. Nanala mo yun? Yes, yes. Oh. We, have, we have photos of everybody's smiles and uh, you pointing to, you know, the trenches and, and the, what we were doing, the artifacts. We were, we were working, okay, to paint the, the scene. Uh, for those of you here, we're all working in the cave, uh, digging, excavating. And then Idil comes in with like a bunch of people. Are they from the tourism? They're, they're from the tourism. Uh, and biology class. Dalawa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tourism yeah. And biology a bunch class, of people. Sorry. And then he takes us around and he, he <laughs> explains and he explains it in their language, uh, using speaking there, communicating there. I think that for me was was a very memorable uh, experience for me and also for them. I think it it really boosted everybody's morale uh, yung mga site visit na ganun yun lang yun lang ma- may dadagdag ko I also wanted to add um, to the rule of fun ni, ano, ni Dante no? I think fun like you know how we have fun in movies pero hindi naman lahat yun comedy hindi naman lahat tawanan diba? minsan iyakan minsan takotan minsan kabahan so these are all I think Basta maantig mo yung audience, I think that is already a creative and fun or engaging way to um, to compel them to care about these things. And I think, um, hindi naman, like for example, with the idea of policy 
and protection or heritage protection. Hindi naman pwedeng palaging ano um, joke time or or casual lang para lang to get them ano to get them compelled or move to support. Um, sometimes it has to be also serious. Pero I think um, as long as we appeal to to the cause, no, um, we can choose naman the appropriate tones that uh, will not necessarily be like what we do with um, other topics or other projects, pero it will still have the same kind of impact with uh, other people. Um, for example, in Atin, actually, mas serious yung tone ng Atin, pero we find that mas marami kaming mga comments doon. Kasi, for example, there was an episode on um, yung mga medyo nakawala ng traditions. Um which are exemplified in some of our collections like the Pasil pottery even the dioramas which is um from the from the wood carving um traditions of paete um na medyo nawawala na ngayon we talked about that in atin and then nakikita namin sa comments na oh dapat hindi mawala tong mga to ganyan ganyan so um there's still that uh that uh direction that we can take hindi naman necessarily la kailangan i i casual talk lang or i joke lang or i youthful talk lang or i, i game it can also be in a way an appeal to a certain motion um depending na lang siguro kung ano yung ano natin yung uh, goal um I also wanted to say that ano uh, and I think it's the same rin yung kay Edila at kay Linel na merong uh, siguro hindi reward eh, pero parang may, merong uh, may may physical materiality ng ano ng yung landscape so maganda na maki, may, kahit na yung mga tao na muwi bisita doon ay yung mga dinadala niyo doon ay mga taga doon uh, meron ring exchange so hindi lang hindi lang tayo, tayo or hindi lang kayo as archaeologists or uh, researchers ang nagbibigay ng information meron rin kayong nakukuha so meron, uh, it's very conver- conversational um and i think ito rin yung KJ kasi usually when people think na think about uh, youtube videos um it's a one way eh. pero the fact na merong mga comments uh, there's also that feedback part. So, uh, despite being online and kahit yung mga uh, the visitors in the Ili Cave or in uh, Biak na Bato are, are physically there, they're also getting some feedback doon sa, ano, sa ginagawa ninyo, which I think is fascinating because it's also uh, it's one thing to think about the, the, the conceptualization, the practices, pero it's another thing to take in yung uh, yung concepts and to also listen to the locals which i think a lot of you are also uh doing Mer- oh, so uh you know, i i thought that was pretty fascinating uh, uh andrea okay. Ayun, um thank you anna just to jump off the the whole thing about conceptualization pati na rin challenges and i suppose this is as well future directions ninyo um because of course this session deals with uh creative ways and approaches because generally as has been thrown in several times the keyword is accessibility diba kaya nga nagkakaroon tayo ng creative ways in doing this but now um i, I suppose is uh, what i'd like to ask is how can we go about greater accessibility so this is more of a chicken or egg question but um for example how did you select your target audience or um because that also ties in i suppose with your choice of platform right? internet bringing it uh, physically to the people but how do you go about it because of the pandemic at the same time the choice of language because i think again ano yan eh, uh, babalik yan eh, kung, kung si, kung, mas ano ba yung yung sino yung target audience niyo or kung gusto niyo wider pero ano yung language na gagamitin niyo so i suppose um yung yung main thing dito is how how can you further cater to this accessibility or siguro pwede nating ibalik din sa tanong na sino ba muna yung main audience niyo and how do you um eventually 
plan on expanding but you have different groups different backgrounds um jumping in but you know, to to go about this this accessibility uh na concept um anyone want to start off i don't i don't want to put people um in ano ah <laughs> Ay, sige, sige Dante, let's go. <laughs> um, about the accessibility and the, the audiences, I think most of the that I I pretty much covered in the earlier um, parts of the RTD. But to answer your other question about um, different, what are my what is my main audience? I think I also mentioned that earlier as well. But yes, to reiterate, my main audience is um. Most of college students these days, because of the pandemic setting and working as a part-time lecturer as well. But in jumping off from what Jay was saying, I definitely wholeheartedly agree. It can't always be fun all the time. Um, fun is just the beginning. Fun is just the beginning. But of course, it will give us the opportunity to end things on a more serious note right? and to give it depth, right? So for example, this activity. Oh, yeah, it's fun at first, you know, but then you start to see the students sweat and struggle. You start to see them getting a little bit frustrated that they can't hit the target. And then at the end of the session, I say, oh, do you guys appreciate our ancestors now? The sacrifice they have they've made for you? Boom! You and your mga emotional appeals. It can't always, it can't always be fun. Dapat may patungo yan. It's got to lead to a, to a driving point that they can take away. And oftentimes, it's a very serious um deep or solemn point that 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 we are trying to make with a sense of urgency so yeah uh but i can understand where you're getting at day it is super challenged lala it's a chicken and egg thing because the kind of messages that we want to give out the kind of um points that we want to focus on it's going to depend on our audience right so me, I'm I'm thinking more as a as a lecturer, and there's plenty of room for, for processing for processing these kinds of activities, even shallow activities. You can process it into something deep, but I can I, I can only imagine how hard it is for like museum, or like working in the policy level or institutional level or with the community. So, yeah, you know, hats off hats off to you guys. Yes, Adil. Ay, sa akin siguro, ano, uh, isa dun sa gagawin namin dun sa Black na ba exhibit na project kita sama si Bea ay yung pagpapakita ng Bulacan landscape kasi ay nakikita namin na to make the people believe na na importante yung, yung kanilang space, itong Bulacan, ay yung ano no, no yung yung initial uh, key initial point for them to appreciate is the beauty so kumbaga parang uh, i-exhibit namin yung different kind of landscape ng upland ng Bulacan so yung deck na bato yung cars yung river yung cave papakita namin yan pero the, the concept behind is to make other people believe na yung beauty na yan ay meron siyang ano no meron siyang uh, long uh, long history na connected doon sa physical landscape na yon so nakikita ko kasi na ano eh no uh, importante na yung uh, mga mga audience ay hindi lang nakikita yung mga specific na mga artifacts dapat nakikita din yung 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 mismong space na uh, na, na nakikita pa din nila hanggang ngayon kasi ay from there they can understand na pag itong landscape na ito ay nagbago malaki yung mawawalang gap doon sa kanilang kamalayan bilang mga tao at uh, somehow we are trying to do it yung idea ng promote and protect so we promote the place in order for the people to attract idea na ito ay dapat na proteksyonan so parang ganon so isa yan sa mga ipipicture namin doon sa Biak na Bata Exhibit Yan, yun lang, yun lang yung masishare ko siguro na medyo something uh, creative, no? Doon sa ginagawa namin dito. Thank you. Thank you, Edil. Pero siguro, um, gusto ko din tanungin, um, 
'di ba kasi parang parang you're really trying to develop the website and and what not yes, um yes. ano yung parang avenues in your rims kunwari sa mga hindi hindi ganun ka wala masyadong access sa sa mga gadgets or hindi ganun kaganda yung yung internet connection nila mm. parang meron ba kayong ka- kaakibat Meron, ah, yung isang kasing kasamang project noong ah, biyak na ba ito exhibit ay yung mobile exhibit. So doon sa mobile exhibit, actually, yung isa sa mga ipipicture na na video documentary doon ay yung ginawa ni Rob Brown sa Tanggapan Cave. So other than that, ay i-feature din namin yung mga yung mga ano, ano, modified animal bone at saka yung ilang mga stone tool na nakuha doon sa biyak na ba ito. At uh, sabi nga namin ni Bea, ay ipo-project namin to in in a language na maintindihan nila at doon sa visual representation na mas madaling ma- makuha, no? Hindi lang yung kumbaga parang uh, ipapakita yung hindi lang yung ano, no? Hindi lang yung archaeological time period, but also the use of this of this material. So sa tingin kasi namin, ano eh, uh, yung kasing bulakan ay uh, well known kami sa sa kwento ng kasaysayan no? sa historical time period pero doon sa doon sa at yun sa pre-colonial time and prehistoric period wala kasing mukha yung bulakan eh, no? so wala kaming ganyang klase ng uh, historical narrative so itong ginawa ng BSU at ng ASP ay breakthrough ito dahil sa pamamagitan ng mga material na ipipresent this year sa mga exhibit na gagawin namin, kahit yung mga walang access sa, sa mga gadget, ay uh, inisip na rin ng mga, ano yan, ng mga partner namin dito sa, sa BSU. So yung, mga, yung tourism, College of Hospitality and Tourism Management, sila yung nag, um, nag, nag, nag-create ng idea ng mobile exhibit at uh, nakita namin na mukhang imposible na maging sustainable ito kung kung literal na yung artifact yung ilalagay mo dun sa mobile exhibit. So nagkakap sila ng idea na i-produce ng mag-produce ng isang uh, parang video documentary na pinapakita yung uh, uh, long history of Bulacan uh, before the before the historical uh, colonial time. Uh, hindi ko pa nakita hindi pa namin nakita yung video na ginagawa nila pero ongoing yung kanilang uh, pag uh, pag-shoot no, nitong itong video na ito at uh, siyempre uh, i-eliminate namin agad yung idea ng ini-interview yung mga expert sa amin para kasi ano yan, no? hindi namin nakikita na magiging effective kung ganun yung gagawin uh, mayroon lang isang magnanarit kung ano yung value nung kung ano yung value ng artifacts na yon and then uh, more on visual no yung uh, more on uh, projection of uh, arch- uh, cultural material material culture yung ipapakita dun sa video so yun uh, pero yung sa website ano eh um, hindi kami ganoon kasigurado kung kaya this year eh kaya ko kay Bea kung <laughs> ano dito ba si Bea <laughs> na yata pero pero moving forward no Hopefully, pag nagda-die down na ngayong pandemic, uh, definitely i-resume ninyo itong um, mobile exhibits, no? Yes. And I uh, suppose mag- magkaka-hybrid film, ano din kayo? Documentary viewing? Yes. Uh, ever? Uh, okay. Sige, thank you very much, Idil. Okay. Um, should we move on to Jay? Okay, so, well, there's always that opportunity to... Um, partner with schools or have more people uh, follow our channel so that they have access or they can follow yung activity namin online, not just on uh, social media, but also on Facebook, on our website. I think one of the uh, directives that we haven't figured out, but we really want to explore is uh, crowdsourcing information. Um, And that's I guess a future plan, um, which is actually it's it seems easy, but because the platform is there to do that, but to get people to answer, to respond, to a call, uh, to talk about uh, what does this uh, artifact or how does this object relate to you, or do you associate yourself with it? I think 
that is the kind of discussion that we want to to start or initiate moving forward hindi lang yung sa amin lang nanggagaling yung information yung content um and then taga respond lang yung mga tao because i think as uh as sorry as idil mentioned nga importante yung hindi lang puro from the experts yung knowledge because a lot of the knowledge about history about culture is from the people themselves so that's something that we want to cultivate and uh, an attitude that we want to cultivate moving forward and maybe the online space is a good place to to do that but as to how we can do that kailangan pa namin pag nilahin nila ayan um siguro pag medyo nag uh, as we already finish also with our renovation with our re reopening um once that out of the way i think that's really one of the ways that we think we can engage people more and i just want medyo magda diverge ako ng konti but i think um one of the lessons that i learned in this whole process of writing um things for uh, content for the ayala museum no is you should trust your audience no as much as na discourage yung mga narinig natin yung mga incest sa mga majoha, di ba? Maraming yung mga ganun na parang, or yung mga about sa policy na, na, na walang priority sa AP or sa history na it, it wasn't even that in-depth to, to begin with tapos binabawasan pa ng binabawasan every year. But I think um, it's not just, uh, kumbaga parang we should still trust our audience. We should refrain also from filtering uh, our content kasi i think what's better to do is to distill no na parang let's not dumb down the content para mas maging masa siya or mas maging palatable siya i i i trust uh, the audience that they are capable of uh, coming up or ending up with the same ideas and attitudes about about kami or tayo na talagang passionate about history and culture maybe not to our level but there there will be some sympathy for what we do naman as long as you are able to find uh the right words the right concept the right ideas that you can connect with them uh connect to them no um and that's our responsibility as messengers or as custodians so yon so that's uh one thing that i really wanted to impart today then thank you no um that that is actually a very good point kasi um especially nowadays diba yung yung trying not to underestimate the audience kasi diba in recent times medyo allergic din yung mga tao sa stance na let me educate you diba so we don't want to to enter that whole thing um but because you uh, just going back earlier you mentioned something about perhaps partnering with schools and what not um kasi diba for 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 now uh, ang ang main language niya rin ay english um my plans ba of eventually doing at least subtitles in different yeah. languages yeah that's that's one of the ways that we are thinking of also granting more access to to add captions in uh, various mother tongues uh definitely we will start with filipino uh and then maybe move to although of course it will come from either uh Parang, uh, it will be outsourced or it will be through volunteer work but definitely uh, that can be done that's one of the easiest ways to do to to, to make it more um, understandable or make it more accessible is to really uh, literally speak in their language yung, um, yung content namin. okay thank you very much Jay so last but not the least Ellie okay accessibility um in terms of accessibility, there's actually one uh, thing na uh, hindi ko na nilabanan. So the, the person who designed the sheet said, Ellie, I will do it in full color. Thus I said, but wait, uh, how will they print it? It's going to be hard to print. Uh, like we have, we had funds to print it in full color for, for Ile, for Diwil, but how will other schools print it? He's like, well, you have to figure that out. But I will do it in full color because, for once, let them have it in full color. So, and I said, okay, fine. Um, so that is 
Ah, well, so that is a current dilemma. Um, because actually, all of the activities, hindi siya dual specific. So you can talk to a fisherman anywhere and, and ask him about fish catch anywhere. And it was actually, um, and that was a real research question. Like the friend who made that activity, yun talaga yung research niya. And she was doing that. And so she just sort of turned it into an activity that high school students could do. Um, and this is, and this is research. And so it was a chance for them to actually see research around um, them in, in their neighborhood. Hindi yung usual research questions that you develop in school, which I, like, I remember research subject in high school and I did not like it. Um, so it, it's fun and it's around you and it doesn't actually cost much to do. Uh, and so I want to find a way. Well, one, one thing in our heads, is the dream list is to find a way to bring it to more places and, and then eventually have students connect with each other and see how the answers uh, in different places are similar or how they're different and, and actually process whatever data they're collecting themselves, which is, it's just a nice dream. Uh, don't know yet how that will happen, but it's a nice dream. Uh, aside from that, um, one other thing is uh, a virtual ELIF field trip would be nice. Um, because we get that, uh, I get asked that question a lot. Okay, so how can we like see it if I'm not there? Because it's actually quite hard to get there. And so, yeah, another thing on the nice dream list. But I think uh, in terms of audience, um, there's a very obvious bias. And then uh, after the immediate evil audience, then we think of, of how do we get it out to more people? Thank you, Ellie. No, so it's it's uh, so generally speaking, hopefully to expand as well, I suppose. And I, I like that you mentioned, you, you know, talking about wag din natin titipirin, no? Because parang they deserve. I think, but again, that's where you know we have the issues again, once again, with uh, funding and how to uh, make things uh, fun, no? But I think this ties in very well with um, Anna's um, next discussion point. Thanks, uh, uh, thanks, Dea. Uh, I think one of the major questions before we open it up to the rest of the uh, the the uh, audience, uh, maybe I can ask you how what were the what were some of the feedbacks that you've been getting, or what were some maybe you have some memorable feedbacks that you got. What was the reception that you had? You touched on this uh, a bit on some of. Uh, uh, on your, some of your realizations uh, in in the in the practice and how you adjusted, that maybe you can give us some ideas um, and maybe uh, based on the reception that you had, maybe you can also expand on how you want to move forward in some mga projects in your and some mga activities that you want to do. Um, maybe we can uh, move uh, work our way back from uh, Ellie and then we'll go through everyone. Thank you. Okay, so in um, initially, I designed it as uh, so radio escuela siya because I knew that the school had radio equipment and that they were supposed to do it, uh, do parang radio-based instruction. When we finally finished recording all the episodes, it turns out they never used the radio equipment. So at the start of the pandemic, they received the radio equipment, they installed it, but it never happened. And so we're like, ah, okay, so paano na to? Um, and then what, ha what eventually happened was we Bluetooth new episodes to students who had phones. And so every week when they had a new episode, they would, get, they would get it. And for students who didn't, they would listen to it in school before they left. So that was a, a shift. And also I remember um, one very crucial moment was when a teacher said, well, and dami na nilang module, tapos madadagdag pa to. Tapos, tapos parang, ah, okay. Um, but, it turns out, um, so I, I quite like her now. She was very, very helpful. Um, because that, that moment for us, um, was a, it's real. Like, marami nga silang module. 
ang thing lang was our module was in full color. So, <laughs> so kids wanted it the next week. Um, and so that was, that was one thing we had going for us. And so they would come again and again, plus the fact that you get a stamp uh, when you come back. So it's like value card. Or parang yung SAR na, uh, SRA ba yun, na parang nagiging, ano, uh, I'm going to read as much dahil meron akong, ano, it's a competitive thing. <laughs> Even if you're competing against yourself. Um, <laughs> may, and, gan- may ganun pa ba ngayon? <laughs> apparently, yes. And, uh, oh, really? Yung gula- okay. uh, uh, or promo stuff, sabi ni Dante. Yes, na ano, di ba, yung mga tatak sa uh, ibang mga uh stores i guess na you you get a free ano ko hairdo or something uh, as a starbucks sabi ni ada <laughs> kung alam yung mga ganyan eh alam ko lang yung mga pasalon salon na pa nails ano if you get this you you get free art or something so para saya saya naman nun. so uh, how about you, uh, Jay? In in terms of feedback, uh, do you have or reception? Yeah. Well, generally, uh, since um, hindi pa namin na maximize talaga yung talagang potential na reach niya with the channel, no. But generally, the the feedback has been positive. The the most touching that we always get is that, um, parang people have some realization about things that. Uh, they think are have always been pero yun pala have evolved through time or has changed throughout history or they seem to not care so much about it and then they care li- about it a little bit more after and then of course um interesting then how sometimes magkakaroon ng sariling convert sub conversations in the comment section uh parang so I, lalo na pag when it comes to the pre-colonial history subject matters kasi ang dami doon kasi speculative <laughs> so parang maraming mga nagdi-discuss uh it we we really enjoy if there are discussions that are made uh whether it's in our YouTube channel or whether it's on Facebook um even if medyo questionable yung mga claims ng iba <laughs> we still encourage um discourse the one interesting um feedback that we get na hindi naman negative no but are also things to consider is meron mga comment about how hindi daw neutral yung tone ng voice over or um ano pa ba yung mga ano that medyo mahirap yung mga words hindi nila intindihan uh, or um, sana, it, yun nga, some of our videos kasi don't have the uh, bilingual subtitles yet. Or, um, or yung, yung oh, the first few times that we did the videos, medyo hindi pa namin masyadong gamay yung audio settings nung pag-export namin. So medyo napapan, napupunan nila na parang medyo masyado daw mahina or nasa right lang daw yung audio. So these things, yung pinupunan nila, mali, they don't really comment much about the content, but more of like how they experience the content. And you would think na parang sana hindi na lang nila binanggit. <laughs> or would that have been worth mentioning pa ba? But I think that's also, for me, ang interpretation ko doon, they care, that's, um, if you didn't care about what, uh, who you were talking with, you wouldn't go to that length of having to leave that comment because you could live your life without having to leave that comment, diba? Um, But yeah, so we take those um, criticisms or those uh, uh, constructive opinions to, to heart because that just means that uh, we were able to engage them in a way that they cared enough to leave uh, how how they experienced uh, our content behind. So, so those are things that we should also maybe think about, not just the content, but also the user experience, I think is very important. And I guess it's also, uh, that's right, the, experience, the user experience is also something that a lot of people uh, really think about. Um, maybe, Edil and Dante can also add to that uh, concept of reception and uh, uh, feedback. And uh, 
at sa experiences ng mga uh, tao na, na tinulungan rin nila or um, or were also part of their project. Maybe we can start with Edil. Oh. So no. Um, 2018, nagkaroon kami ng parang full-blown exhibit ng result ng tanggapan excavation. <clears throat> At masasabi ko na talagang yung audience na nagpunta rito ay hindi lang talaga mga taga-academe. At yung iba sa kanila ay hindi namin talaga kilala, mga enthusiast lang talaga sa history. At uh, gusto nila yung nakita nila dahil sabi nila ay mga bagong datos ito sa kasaysayan. At uh, Buti na lang daw at sinulat namin sa, sa Tagalog, sa Pilipino, yung mga description at uh, madaling maintindihan. Siguro isa yun sa mga advantage namin dito sa Bulacan dahil talagang purong Tagalog kami pag nagsalita. No? Uh, lagi niyang tinatanong sa akin nung mga naging kaklasiko nung nasa College of Arts and Letters pa ako sa UP. Bakit, paano mo natutunan niyang pagtatagalog mo na yan? Parang napakatatas mong magtagalog. Eh, sabi ko, kasi ako, uh, bulakan ako. So parang uh, talagang kilala kami dun sa ganung klase ng lingwahe na yung bulakan namin ay uh, malinaw at saka yung madaling maintindihan. At uh, yun. So isa yun sa mga naging feedback namin no, na na-attract namin talaga sila no, nung, nung time na yun na, na nag-exhibit kami dito sa opisina. And then uh, bukod dun ay yung mga, again, sabi ko nga kanina, Uh, within our institution, we need to do talaga public ar- archaeology. No? So yung mga colleges, katulad halimbawa ng College of Education, yung College of Tourism, College of Arts and Letters, ay uh, twice sa loob ng apat na taon ay pinature kami sa kanilang student paper. At sa tingin ko ay malaki yung impact nun dahil sabi ko nga kanina, After we we ano no we conduct the archaeological research project in Bulacan ay mayroon ng at least ay lima na nagsulat ng kanilang thesis na may touch ng archaeology. At si Sir Mandy ay ini-email nila at sabi ko ay mabait namang tao si Sir Mandy at pag tinanong niyo naman niya ay sasagot at uh, natutuwa kami no dahil uh, breakthrough talaga yon dahil nga parang ano eh no uh, yung word yung archaeology ay sabi ko nga kanina ay madalas na mabanggit no sa mga sa mga survey na ginawa nila Bayer nila Robert Fox pero yung yung holistic na archaeology na may kinalaman sa environment, may kinalaman sa landscape, may kinalaman sa kweba ay ngayon lang na dinig no? at uh, officially published ng opisina namin. At marami kaming nakuhang ano no uh, positive na na, <clears throat> na feedback at isa sa mga ebidensya noon ay maraming mga partner na pumasok sa opisina ang DNR, ang DOT, ang CHED at yung iba pang ayun ngayon yung aming bagong partner yung Baliwag Polytechnic College ay they want they also want to do archaeology at um, natutuwa kami dahil Uh, may naging kumbaga parang hindi lang nalagay sa shelf, hindi lang nalagay sa sa na display na isang isang publication na nilabas namin yung Bulacan Landscape Reconstruction Publication at talagang naka-influence siya doon sa mga colleges within our institution. Halimbawa, doon sa College of Science, meron pala silang subject na human evolution at uh, Talagang dinidiscuss pala doon yung maraming mga uh, uh, genome homo na na, 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 na na publish na at in-invite kami no para magsalita doon sa doon sa isang session nila at uh, parang pinapaliwanag pinapaliwanag sa amin so kung ano ba yung uh, ano ba yung epekto kung meron ng 7800 years old na archaeological time period ang Bulacan So, natuwa kami kasi ay uh, from the cultural perspective ay maraming mga perspective na nanggaling outside ng uh, culture and heritage or history na gusto nang sumali, no? gustong makialam at gustong mag, magsalita doon sa mga datos na na-produce namin. So, yun lang. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Edil. I think ma-anticipate natin na marami pa rin kayong 
uh, na ina-expand sa inyong uh, gawain. And I think it's also worth mentioning that uh, and for many of the projects here, it's just still in the beginning stages. Uh, at nag with the pandemic, I guess it's also changing. Mm -mm. Uh, and see, si Dante, uh, last but not the least, maybe we can ask for some of the feedbacks that you got and how you uh, changed it up or did, how did you change? Oh, well, well, um, we've been doing variants of this activity for, for many years now, almost 10 years uh, or more. I remember before I was even a lecturer at, for Archeo One, like you, Anna, you used to invite me to, to do this thing until I, I became a lecturer myself. Um, I remember doing this in, in Palawan, also with, with Linnell and Idil when we were messing around in the cave with the fire making. And I know, na hatak din natin si Ara dyan um, sa mga kaguluhan natin. Uh, so the beauty about this activity, because it's so simple, it's so flexible, no? and um, it can be rearranged. The only thing that we have to consider is, of course, safety. But looking back throughout the years, many different audiences have tried this activity. Uh, I remember with Sinadeya. Um, okay, I, I never really imagined it to get any bigger than, you know, a few college students. But then remember Arete Deya, like I never imagined it to be that like at that scale where we have like lots and lots and lots of kids at a camp level. And then uh, that was a huge challenge for me, like trying to even imagine the logistics of it. So I think for me, actually, um, I'm less of an expansionist. And right now I'm focusing more on making the instructions in the course pack more honed and more clear for the students because Sam after Sam, they do it, but then I see like they could have thrown better if I if I gave more detail in, in how to do it and all these things. So I think that's where I'm at. But like Ellie, um, I've also considered, wouldn't it be fun if there was a kind of leaderboard or some kind of Discord server or some, some kind of where the students' feedback, the people's feedbacks are there and then they can all sort of interact with each other just like what Jay is, um, is, is talking about. Like, Imagine all those comments, no, and the comments within the comments and the whole conversation, it becomes a living thing. I think that's the beauty about the online thing. I'm not too ready for that yet. I'm not sure. I guess I'm a little scared um, for, for, for things like that. So I just try to hone whatever I have now. And maybe after the pandemic, uh, we can kick off with making it more wide. But for now, um, with regard to accessibility, yeah, I try to keep my course pack very accessible. Um, I think what Linnell and Dea were talking about the, the considerations with printing and how to present your material. Uh, that's always a challenge for me, like how to lay it out, like whether I should use more images, whether I should worry about copyright infringement and all these things. So at the end of the day, I just end up using like bland text. And which is why uh, for me, it's still the most accessible for me as one preparing it. For, for whoever, you know, who has internet connectivities, people who are using it through the phone, uh, I think text is, is, is a very accessible format. But then again, um, what you're sacrificing with all text then is the interactiveness and the immersion and, and you know, the visual, the visual appeal. And that's why I, we try to come up with activities as such, bonus activities and other things that can get them more engaged in a non-textual manner. But yes, I, I can resonate with all of the things being discussed right now, the challenges, the, the hopes and dreams, the, the, the dream list. Yeah, actually my dream is for someday like to be, to turn these um, games, physical games into actual digital games, uh, which some of us are working on. Um, I've also been dabbling into that myself personally. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the dream, that's the dream. Thanks everyone. I think that's a very nice way to uh, kind of uh, en encompass lahat ng all of the uh, ideas, the feedbacks that you've been getting, the works that you've done, the feedbacks that you're getting, and the future works that you want to do. 
Um, and I, we're very excited to hear more about what's going to happen. But I think it's also time for us to open it for the uh, rest of the audience um, who, who have been sending some questions. So we have a couple of questions here and there are very interesting uh, questions. Uh, it, it says that, well, for Edil and uh, Jay, the funding, you mentioned some of their fundings are coming from the uh, from your institution or from your um, from other separate institutions, but maybe we can can we hear from Ellie and Dante where your fundings are coming from, uh, and how can this be? How this has um, uh, can, is it accessible to other people as well? Maybe we can ask uh, Alinel first. Okay, so the. The kit was funded through uh, during the pandemic. National Geographic came out with a COVID education grant, which was so. How do you um, transform your learning activities uh, during during COVID into something that is more accessible? So that is what funded that kit, um, and they stopped that specific grant, but um, and that. And all the money from that grant is also spent already. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, I think um, so. Level one National Geographic grants are open. Um, I think the next cycle is October 20 something, um, or basta in October. Um, and because they have their focus areas, um, so that's research, conservation, storytelling. Uh, education and there's one more which I can't remember right now but yeah so they can find uh, they can find something like this or any other like they can find Archeo Gaming uh, I know they've funded uh, bio games so like biology conservation games I have no, I know they've funded a few I haven't heard of any na specific na archaeology games that they've funded but it's not something that they won't fund so it's definitely something that if somebody proposes uh and they see why um you know they can do it that's interesting to hear so uh, and uh i guess it's also uh you formed the team for this as well yes yeah, so uh the team consisted of so young 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 researchers who created their activities, um, the designer who said it will be in color, um, some uh, another friend who helped in recording uh, and fixing your audio, and also uh, a co-host who was who was also hosting the the radio stuff with me, um, and then we had the whole set of teachers who were helping um, distribute the activities and and collect and keeping the kids uh, engaged and and a lot more people just helping out with like how do you record how do you how do you do all of this um yes it was it was quite a a huge effort thank you ellie um uh, and i think it's interesting for a lot of people to hear about the uh, the resources that you also got so hopefully that can inspire other people to uh, get into that type of uh, research uh, and also uh, that type of funding and how about you dante how, where do you, how do you get the funding if you can, uh, you can share it. <laughs> well as i as i mentioned before um the, the activities that that were pretty much home brewed so they're very cheap they're very accessible to do um, but yeah, wait, first backtrack to answer, actually, I never actually answered your original question before this one, the previous question with regard to student feedback. Um, yeah, I've, I've had some, some great feedback, um, throughout, throughout the years and the way it's done is somehow relating to this current question is in the pandemic setting, there's carefully written instructions and then they would video themselves throwing, th doing the challenge. Okay, and then the smiles they get and the, 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 the laughter and all that and their technique, that's huge feedback enough for me. Like I can see like, 
like how much effort they put into it. Some of them are even better than me, like with with really cool like technique and everything and 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 all that. And some of them also write their feedback through email saying, oh, this was fun. I learned a lot. I appreciated our ancestors more. So that's the feedback. But all of this is possible throughout the pandemic setting because it's very accessible. And to answer your question now, uh, it can be self-funded. I'm all for DIY, um, you know, homebrew, self-study. Uh, if if you don't have funding, no problem. Like you can you can still do a mini version of it. That's that's what I what I really like. However, going back to what I mentioned earlier uh, with Dea, with working with other other partners, um, applying this activity and upscaling it working with other partners then that's when we have to talk about funding and uh, I'm probably not the best person to ask regarding that but usually these come from the the depending on the activity these come from the the, the target audience mismo who are willing to to the participants mismo who are willing to to pay and becomes packaged and and we give them what they're what they're expecting so it's um and we've been doing that for years no so so I can say that it's 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 pretty sustainable as long as it's it's well uh, planned and well organized. Um, something that that I'm not very good at, so I have to give my hats off to to like the rest of the team and all the other, you know, partners that we've worked with throughout the years. So yeah, that's it for me. Okay, thanks, Dan. No, um. We have another question. Um, they're actually interested in knowing what the age ranges are of, of the teams here. So I suppose this goes out to LEJ and Adil. Uh, because of course, I suppose in some in some ways the ages of the people in the on the on the team do affect or, or do contribute certain perspectives as well. Maybe we could start with Jay. Um uh, iba kasi yung physical age at mental age. Uh -oh. So, well, actually, sobrang lawak ng age range ng team namin sa Ayala Museum. I'm probably in the middle of the demographic. I'm 34 now. So, maraming mga, a lot of those who are in the social media side, the production side, are in yung mga nasa 20s nila. And then... We all and then a lot of the consultative and you know, my review uh nandun na yun sa mas matanda na sa akin, uh yung senior management namin. But I think we all kind of share the same mental age. I think that just happens when you work in a museum <laughs> or in a or in a similar institution where you're 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 always trying to be creative, trying to be expressive, trying to be so passionate about these things. Um, it might be the same for the academe, where it might, but I, I'm not sure. No, I, I, I think gets maybe some sort of subtext in dun sa, dun sa question is there may be some conflict no, or mis, uh, disagreements among uh, demographics pag if you're working in a team setting. So, Lucky lang sa amin na medyo sa mental age, medyo homogenous kami. Even if our age gap is um, malaki-laki. So, sortihan lang din. Um, but yeah, that's important to have, uh, to, to bridge that gap if ever that's something that you are encountering with your own team. And if you believe in something, you just have to fight for it. The worst that they can say is no. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Naman. How about Edil? <laughs> sa amin, sa team namin, ang, ako na yung pinakamatanda rito. 43 ako eh. <laughs> so 43 tapos... Naglaga na uh, pala ito ng age. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> 43 din. Ang mga kasama ko dito range from 30 to 24. 30 to 24. So ako na yung pinakamatanda. <laughs> May, parang may ano pa na, may uh, mga iba-ibang mga background pala dito. Ah. And how about uh, Linel? Is it the same? Or ano ba? Um, <laughs> well, I'm not to say share your age. <laughs> uh, I think early 30s. Uh, which means that's why 
hindi TikTok yung naging sagot. Tapos pinag-isipan namin yun, tapos parang, ah, no. <laughs> parang, uh, maybe one day we'll get there, but let's, you know, limit scope and limitations. Um, let's be aware na hindi natin siya kaya at this point. So, so we were very honest na hindi namin kaya. So, we, we didn't. It's interesting that uh, it's a sabi ng gitre ni Jay na uh, you have the age range, but my cliffhanger effect tayo. Um, I think Anna got sa age sa age range talaga tumigil eh. So um yeah, so age range, but I suppose uh, just in uh, uh, in relation to that um. Someone was asking earlier, because uh, because we're talking about demographics and different perspectives. Kung meron bang mga tabu na concepts or tabu perspectives or tabu narratives, because we're talking about narrative building as well. Um, na you know either because of your affiliation or your funder or even your personal uh, convictions that you would not explore or you would not uh, discuss or talk about with the in your work. Maybe mm. I'd like to ask Dante, because okay. you mentioned earlier about how you start with things that are fun, but then meron kang take home, may take away ano pa yeah. eh, point yeah. na driving point eh. So do you parang because like earlier meant Jay said trying not to filter, but that's also in a not dumbing down sense. But then paano in a in a topic sense? So um Jay or Dante? Jay or go ahead ah, okay taboo taboo uh we try to avoid well i don't i'm not really sure the coverage of taboo but none have really come up so i don't really like worry about it too much but if if ever they do i guess we just try to take it like um step by step and then maybe open it up for discussion uh, I don't I don't really know if I'm the type to super avoid it or maybe I am I don't know I'm not sure or like change the subject if ever such a taboo thing might might arise but uh, yeah I've, I haven't really had to worry about it too much because it hasn't come up however um, with regard to the activity itself the nature of the activity itself I suppose looking at it it's it's pretty violent no like you you take a spear and then you it's all about hitting something. And in this case, like an animal. Uh, I, I really like animals. I don't think I could ever really hunt in real life. Um, but this is, the violence is, is not something, it's not what we're trying to teach. It's not the glorification of violence or, or, or any of that. Instead, it's some, um, maybe that's where the solemnness comes in. And maybe this is where um, the seriousness comes in. Because we're not glorifying the violence here, but we're we're addressing it. We're addressing it. And and we're addressing it on a deeper fundamental human level. That our ancestors had to do this in order to have survived. And so what now? Look at the world around us today. And so I guess that's that's a little bit not naman taboo, but it's a difficult question to to answer or wrap your head around. And it and it stirs up a lot of discussion about um, our nature perhaps as as human beings um so i guess that's one thing that that i can think about however at the end of the day i try to take all those lessons and somehow the driving point of this this activity is to instill focus fair play determination and an overall appreciation for the sacrifice that our ancestors have had to uh do for us in the future generation. Yun. Thanks, Dante. Jay, would you like to jump in? Yeah, um, we're not really so conscious about um, what are the taboo topics. Although, kami din, hindi kami masyado nag-venture to something that may tip the scales or may arouse a, a hearty discussion, parang a hearty debate. Din naman. Parang, I don't think the collection has inspired din, uh, 
Pero parang, parang from the higher ups, wala bang parang, oops, oops, uh, don't, wala, don't tackle wala this? Wala or... pa naman. Siguro kasi yung susulat ko pa or nasusulat pa namin is hindi pa hindi pa umaabot sa gano'n na magre-red flag. Um, but yeah, I think one of the things that I'm learning or we're learning both on the online space and maybe here now in DC, what I'm seeing here sa mga museums dito na that, um, even the museums or even uh, the institutions are having to confront things that uh, about perhaps their practices or their um, their pedagogy or their paradigm that they didn't consider as wrong or possibly sensitive before. For example, itong mga nasa... In, here in DC, kasi syempre, diba, in the National Mall, you have all of these uh, Smithsonian Institution Museums, which, like a lot of the Western museums, have to deal with the histories of colonization, of, uh, of um, extraction, no? <laughs> of, of trauma. And I'm finding it so interesting how they're trying to confront it, but also at the same time, kind of like leaving themselves as parang targets, like the elephant of, of Dante sa cardboard, ano niya, sa cardboard box niya, sa likod. Pero I think it's something that a lot of, I think for our industry no, or, or our field, in like in music, in museology that we have to confront. Kasi, uh, and then we have to kind of still learn uh, what language or how do we bring to the table that kind of awkward discussion <laughs> na parang uh, we're implicating ourselves or our our um, kumbaga parang our the, the, the hand that feeds <laughs> pero at the same time making this acknowledging uh, the, the, the mistakes of the past so that's not just that that hasn't really come to us yet as a as a thing to reflect on or as an urgent need. Pero that's really something that's going to happen in the future, not just for us, but most of the uh, museums in the future, not in the Philippines and in everywhere else. Thanks, Jay. Um, Ellie, meron ba sa funders na may limitations bang binigay sa inyo? Uh, ang limitation na actually, so binabasa ko yung, yung contract the other day, uh, kailangan mo lang sila, <laughs> kailangan mo lang sila I think for any media stuff. So, I think they're just mostly concerned that you, you, you just say that. Um, parang wala naman. Yeah. I, I, well, at the very least, I didn't consider any when I was making it aside from that. Yeah. That's good to hear. So anyone interested, you know, um for for doing similar projects with NGS, go ask Ellie for advice, no? She can give you a lot. Um Edil, um kayo ba lalo sa mga affiliations mo, meron bang mga hangganan ba yung pwede n'yong gawin? Okay, mukhang Okay, mukhang sinapian si Edil ng phone call. So um Anna all right. Uh, siguro may isa pang uh, as a closing uh, question because it's already 12 o'clock na pala. Uh, there's uh, somebody who asked, uh, meron po ba dito, maybe sa inyo, uh, who's interested in developing a Sinescuela-like project for public archaeology? And I guess this is also something because it's very specific. This is a very, uh, we were talking about age. Uh, a lot of people are having a uh, quest uh, siguro sa age range ko ang tatanungin ko batibot pero uh, sa mga ibang tao <laughs> sino eskwelang naaalala nila i'm really showing my age so uh, maybe it's everyone um, anyone uh, might be interested or are you are there something in the works sa inyong mga uh, future endeavors what do you think maybe get, anybody is feel uh, feel free to chime in or baka may ano kayo what do you think of that having that uh, project in the future would it be doable 
um, kasama siya sa dream list. <laughs> kasama siya sa, like, I'm just gonna say it now, kasama siya sa dream list. Uh, once again, I don't know how that's gonna happen, but it's, it's, it's a dream. And a dream list has no limits. So there. I think yun yun yung, uh, yes, Dante? Yeah, like what Lin- Linnell said, kasama yun sa dream list. But I think there's, Uh, like few of us currently but i don't know maybe that's about to change in the future because um i think the more archaeologists or the more people who are interested in in cultural heritage um most likely yung possibility na mangyari yan yeah um, i'm also cur- curious uh if they're thinking about it like if as like a public program production level or is it yung involving celebrities or or ano parang going mainstream ba yung 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 tanong um definitely going mainstream is the biggest goal naman talaga for all of us uh, but at this point i think it was touched upon earlier din oh um yung pag uh, focus ng energy um Yes, we want to reach thousands and millions of views, like a lot of um, like a lot of those who make it big on YouTube. And we actually just recently hit the mark to be able to monetize from our YouTube channel. But we're still a very small and nondescript uh, platform, uh, and that would be a big dream. Na talaga o maabot sa how many thousands yung views namin. But I think more than impressions talaga iba din ipa pa din yung engagement pag high yung engagement if you have to choose between high views or high impressions versus high engagement doon na kayo sa engagement um basta yung when you feel or you have a sense of a community that's really involved that's really passionate as passionate as you you don't have to be the biggest thing or you don't have to have the the largest number of followers The, the devotion will be the same so and then with that devotion you'll be able to um be able to seek their support either through volunteer work through campaigning through um through sharing or or spreading the word about what you do yun lang so um i think we should kind of dissociate ourselves from uh the idea that having high view views or being mainstream is a mark of success it's not purely the mark of success kasi um it's i think it's more of the engagement that we we really need to reach for that even even if you're just a small community at the core if you're if everyone's in on it uh, you'll be able to do as many great things as you would if you were 100,000 or a million people agree i like that ang ganda <laughs> Um, and just before we end, uh, there's uh, a deal. Uh, thanks for uh, coming back. Maybe you can give us some of the uh, ideas on how you are also limited by your funders, maybe, and from the earlier questions, and maybe uh, also add uh, some <laughs> new projects. Because the problem is the problem Anyway, med- ano to, medyo uh, yung management level. Ang problema kasi ng CHED ay nung binigay nila yung pondo ay uh, masyado nang malapit yung deadline. Kasi ay ma- makukuha kasi sila pag hindi nila in-implement yung, yung pondo. Kaya nila binato sa mga SUCs. So kami naman ay siyempre ginawa namin ng paraan. Pero ganun pa rin. Ano? Uh, ang laki nung... Ang laki nung pondo pero ang liit lang nung panahon para implement. So ang challenge ay, yun nga, yung, yung sinasabi ni Jay kanina, yung <clears throat> paano ka hanap ng mga, dedica- na mga, dedica- uh, mga may dedication ng mga tao na gawin ito ng, <clears throat> ng, ano, no, ng walang masyadong reklamo. Dahil may pondo ka nga pero wala ka namang time. At uh, ang danger ng mga ganitong klase ng setup ay talagang aminin ko na medyo may mga hilaw talagang idea na hinayaan na lang na maging ganon. Pero again, dahil nga ito ay simula pa lang ng archaeological research work ng Bulacan, 
um, nasa process pa kami ng cleaning, ng cleaning ng mga konsepto and how to make the institution and other offices and <clears throat> uh, agency involved. Dahil <clears throat> uh, ang Bulacan ay napakalapit niya sa NCR. So ang, ang, ang epekto nito ay <clears throat> mas mabilis yung epekto ng, ng land conversion sa amin. So yun yung pinagmumulan din nung sinasabi ko kanina na malaki yung ahabuli namin dahil from coastal to upland to agricultural land to cars formation to cars landscape yung mga pagbabagong nangyayari dito. So kaya uh, hindi talaga pwedeng walang collaboration. Hindi pwedeng uh, sosolohin namin yung yung pondo ang ginagawa namin para in order for us to facilitate the 20 million funds ay kinukuha naming partner yung ilang mga academic institution and agencies na pwede. At uh, yun, yung mga ginamit naming pamamaraan. At <clears throat> sa tingin ko ay hindi kami masyadong naging uh, <clears throat> ang tawag dito? Hindi pa kami masyadong naging effective in terms of public archaeology. But we are going there. Thank you. I think naman uh ano uh unti-unti and mm. as mentioned earlier uh covid really threw a wrench into many of the practices at saka sa mga uh, plans ng mga tao and it's very interesting to hear from all of you how all of you also adjusted to the pandemic uh meron kayong pers- do you have a perspective of the pre-pandemic activities and also the post-pandemic uh uh current pandemic activity so that gives us an idea on how we can probably um, in the quote the famous quote so how we can navigate through this um, new normal and I think that cultural heritage is also uh, there's a lot of challenges uh, that comes with it um, but it's very heartening to hear that uh, there's a lot of new ideas coming uh, coming in and especially that it's coming from local uh, um, Uh, trendsetters, local uh, educators like you. So thanks everyone for this uh, very great uh, discussion and thanks to everyone who gave in their uh, ideas as well. Uh, there are some people who are chatting with us at the background in the chats um, and I'm sure that uh, hopefully uh, some of the students here or some of the people who are watching who are interested in collaborating with our uh, with our speakers you may uh, you may uh, email them I think their the information will be up uh, in some of the websites that they have or Facebook pages we've shared them in the Binalo Talks page um, so you can uh, definitely uh, contact them if it's uh, possible uh, Andrea would you like to add more Um, no, basically, we would like to thank all of our panelists for today for, for sharing their experiences. Sana insightful din siya para sa ating participants ngayon. Um, big shout out as well to Ada, who was our tech. Um, again, if you guys have any questions or gusto nyo pang um, sundutin pa yung mga projects nila, um, nasa chat box naman yung mga details. Um, and feel free to to message din sa binalot na uh, page if, if you have parang follow-ups no, na pwede namin i- i-relay sa ating panelists today. So thank you very much everyone. no, um, Anna? Okay, mukhang um, kinuha na naman si Anna ng Internet Lords. Um, so thank you very much for coming. Uh, pasensya na, we went a little over time, but very ano naman yung ating discussion today, okay? Um, for our panelists, feel free to stay behind if you still want to discuss. Um, otherwise, um, everyone, we hope you have a good lunch, have a good day, and we'll see you until the next Binalot Talk. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you.